Grace with Nina and Michelle. Today we have a special guest, Reed Hall. We're going to introduce him in just a minute, but we're going to start out with prayer. Nina. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this night. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just be in the conversation. We ask for the testimony of this wonderful man who has joined us this evening to just bless so many, Lord. So we ask that you would just guide our hearts and our minds, Lord, and bless this night in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, we are going to introduce Reed Hall, who just told us he was Joel Osteen, if you've ever heard of Joel Osteen, his first hire, and he he has a huge resume. When I say huge, I mean huge. He, uh, he t tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay. And we want you to, like, <laughs> tell us, tell us the don't truth. Don't hold back. Yeah, don't um, hold back. It, we're, we ask you to brag about yourself yes. tonight. Okay. We give you okay. permission. Well, I, I work for Joel, and mm -hmm. um, that's probably what, what more can you say? You know, the opportunities that are, that are there. But, uh, you know, if, early on and even before then, I've, I worked in audio, mostly recording. So I've worked with groups like the Newsboys. I was the recording engineer I for their the go-to. Great and music. And site coordination for Michael W. Smith and um, uh, Kirk Franklin did this site coordination and, and uh, actually front of house mix. And uh, certainly Israel Houghton worked on a few of his wow. albums. Co-produced the Lakewood We Speak to Nations. Is That's you awesome. You can find my name on that. And also I was the mix engineer for that. I've, I've probably worked on maybe a hundred or so projects as a producer slash engineer. Wow. For the recording side. So kind of boring, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you it's were like making fun track. of me. Yeah. Laying track in front of a moving train. Well, that's, that's what well, I mean. Well, I, have a, I, have a, I had another life before that when I worked for a, a large oil company, a top 50 was a Fortune 50 company, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chevron, and was a, a relay engineer, a power systems coordinator for, for them. Uh, it was an engine, electrical engineering position, although I don't have a degree, I just have enough schooling <laughs> to have a doctorate, but I, I never finished one thing, I never got a bachelor's. <laughs> wow. But, uh, but I worked as a, as a system coordinator, but with, with that came other opportunities, because I, I was like so ADD, I would get so involved in other things, but I was part of the industrial firefighting team, and then there was an opportunity to, to do uh, a rescue, high angle rescue, what we called it, but rope rescue and you oh had to have goodness. you had to have a medical license for that. So I got my EMT license and, and then was in that rescue and a firefighter and you a have of just done then, so many things. Yeah. And you and you have two boys. I do. I have two boys. Uh, my oldest is Jake is uh, 30 and he's a firefighter. Imagine that wow. uh, at, at a local city in the fire department. But but as a as a is an EMT a, mm -hmm. a medic. Awesome. And then my my youngest is uh, 24. God, he's a senior at Sam Houston State, just about to graduate. Oh, Congratulations, awesome. that's Thank awesome. You. Good daddy. Yeah. Well, so what we're going to talk about today is he has this great life, and everything's going great, and then you were, you were married, and we're going to talk about uh, life after loss or beauty for ashes. And we want, we want to get right into that story. We want you to tell, tell us about your wife. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to back up to 1976 mm -hmm. on April, or excuse me, on August 9th. Uh, a friend of mine who is a praise and worship leader at, at a church uh, here in the Houston area introduced us in high school. I was 16 years old. Wow. And we became inseparable after that. And um, uh, we got married about four and a half years later. And uh, she was a travel agent. And so we got to travel, uh, you know, all over the, at least to this half of the world. We traveled yeah. quite a bit and waited five years before we had our first child. Uh, matter of fact, yesterday would have been my 35th wedding anniversary. Wow. So uh, you talk about this wonderful life. I really have had an incredibly blessed life. I mean, just things always happen. I never really had any hard challenges. My mother passed away uh, on our anniversary, our 15th anniversary. We went on a cruise oh and she passed goodness. away from from uh, cancer. And, and uh, you know, uh, other than that, just really never had, uh, it, not necessarily, you certainly have day-to-day -day challenges and, and right. marriage is challenging in and of itself yes. and getting through. I'm not saying everything was perfect, but we found a way to get through. We'd been together so long, we used to laugh because we were so codependent early on. And, mm -hmm. you know, probably those things that were bad during that are actually what 
tend to hold you together later. You know, mm -hmm. the, the trials and the tribulations that you go through tend to tend to be the glue that, that right. gets you through some of the other things. But you kind yeah. of grew up together. So you Literally. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. She so. raised me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my uh, husband always says about me. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, she, re she really, really did. Yeah. So, you know, we, we uh, I, I, again, I worked for uh, uh, Chevron and, and we just, I thought that was going to be our life. And, mm -hmm. you know, there were times because I was so out of balance. I think partially because I was, had not really found my niche. I mean, I, right. I, I, I did work because we had to eat, <laughs> yes. but, you know, never, you know, I, I seriously always wanted to work for a church. So and, there was and, uh, always a call you felt like yeah. to a church when you felt like you always I did. I, you I, 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 honestly, I, I grew I was a singer and, and played guitar and, and I just always felt like that it was going to be in music. And, you know, I, right out of high school, I traveled with an evangelist for a year and we traveled overseas and throughout, you know, the, the Midwest and, uh, you know, and you, you get away from that, and you finally you get to Nashville, and you find out your waiter's a better singer than you are, <laughs> <laughs> and, and twice as talented. So, uh, you know, that part didn't work out. But it, it would be funny when I was traveling with an evangelist, we would, uh, you know, sing with a singing group, but like they had soloists. But I would always go set the sound up and always doing that. We actually we had a TV show, the evangelist did. We always have the music portion. Well, I ended up doing the audio for the TV show, and I think that God allowed me all those experiences and the of marginal, yeah. the marginal talent <laughs> enough to be up in front of people so that I could yeah. much more relate. You know, it's funny today, I don't hire anybody at Lakewood in audio that is not a musician, that doesn't have the th that experience. It. Yeah, so develop, but you got to be relatable. So yeah. what's it like to be on stage? I can't hear my instrument. I can't hear my vocal. Mm -hmm. You know, So they really understand the, all that. Yeah. And you can just Plus you can relate. see where God was paving the way oh, certainly. with all these little jobs that yeah. really kind of wound but, up with the big... Yeah, kind of and, like King David. But you, know, you were a shepherd, you were yeah. this, you were that, and it but culminated every, ev us. Everything. Even, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the electrical background that I have just paved the way into electronics. The truth was, when I was much younger, in the there were no mega churches back then. Right. There really weren't, right. and certainly didn't have technology and everything. The jobs didn't exist. Right. And and I think it just took 20 years of honing, 19 years <laughs> of honing. But with that, but uh, what was so funny? Uh, and we didn't. I was. I'm a pilot too, and I've had oh, several several, <laughs> several <laughs> airplanes. And and we had one. And one day my wife comes to me and she says, I feel like we need to get out of debt. And uh, at the time, I would I would get off work on a Friday. I had sold. I think I told you I had a recording studio at the time. I'd sold the studio, and uh, I would. I uh, actually I sold the studio. And that's how I paid for my <laughs> for my pilot's license. But but I would fly all over Texas and Louisiana and go work for churches uh, on Friday, and I'd go Saturday teach class and evaluate their sound system, be with them on a Sunday, and fly back Sunday afternoon. And that was like three three times a month. It was a lot. It was I was doing too much. But uh, suffice it to say. <laughs> My wife had high tolerance for, for, for my image, for, for my immaturity, yeah. really. Yes. But but uh, uh, I got off track there. Where where I was headed with that was one day she said, she said I feel like God's telling us to get out of debt, and we you know I was I was the king of finance. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and, and not not in paying bills. I was king uh, king of of being able to finance something and, and and make it happen. We had notes on a bunch of stuff, and so we started uh, getting out of debt. And obviously, the first one was the airplane. I had a really nice plane, and I owned it with two other other folks. And mm -hmm. and uh, of course, I, I was I was excited about owning a plane, as I was with everything else. I would work on the instruments and the radios. You know, I didn't even send it to a shop. I had a friend that was, he would write off my work, and I would I did all the radio and the comm system. You know, I, I kept the plane up, which they love because it didn't cost me. <laughs> my partner. Wow. But, but we do, you know. You have and, to be confident in your work when you do that kind well, of thing. Well, I would have the guy come check my work too. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Yeah. Have some backup. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it did. It was my family wrote in that. So. <laughs> yeah, to make sure. It was okay. So, so anyway. We, we, uh, uh, I said, well, we have this plane so that, you know, and that was my excuse for having the plane is when, when, when I have a weekend free, we can fly down. Her, her sister lived down in the valley and we could fly down there and it was a nine hour drive and I could fly it in two and a half. And, uh, and she said, well, go back and look in your logs. When's the last time we took a trip in the plane? And of course, you know, I'm spending a fortune owning the plane. It had been nine yeah, months expensive. since we had they'd flown one time. I could rent a Learjet. I could rent a 747 for what I spent, it, spent in flying yeah, to, to, to make that one trip, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so we did, we got, we got out of debt and just, you know, just, 
it's almost the minute we got out of debt. I got two phone calls from Houston on a Sunday afternoon, which rarely happened. Two different churches wanted me to go to, to Houston. And we went and visited them both wow. and ended up at this small church. And I'm sitting there the first Sunday I'm there and I'm listening to this guy speak. And it just impressed in my spirit. I said, this guy needs to be on television. You know, he should do it. Now, back up, I had worked in television a little bit. I think I mentioned we had a, a program. The church I went to, uh, Randy and Renee Clark. Y'all may, may know the Clarks. Well, I was there when we first started television. And I was the only one with any experience. So we ended up buying Lakewood's uh, old cameras. And with that, I got to go spend a lot of time with Joel. That's when I first got to, to, uh, to know Pastor Joel. And uh, he was just Joel back then. <laughs> and and uh, so, uh, you know, I've kind of learned television from them, being able to just sit in. And, and uh, But anyway, all, all that to say, w when I, I went to work at this church, it was about the time, I think, that that Joel was, her, his dad had just passed away. And mm -hmm. they were looking, and and, uh, and he had one of his guys call me. And I said, well, yeah, y'all can't afford me. I want to stay on TV. And you know, long story short, we came and talked. I ended up at, at Lakewood and Praise God. just never thought. And so we being out of debt, I think that was the obedience part of that yes. was, mm -hmm. was being obedient to, to, you know, here's my wife. And I said, well, I don't, know if, I don't think you heard right. If God's talking about getting rid of a plane, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's one thing God promised that back to me and that's still not fulfilled. And here we are 20 years later you know, or 18 years later, that that portion is still to come. So I still yeah, have that he's to gonna look to. Yeah, he's going to restore. So you have a restore. plane. There it is. Okay. <laughs> that was for me, That's and I'm right. still standing on the promise. <laughs> but it's inter so interesting to me, all these little yeah. things that you never could have seen yourself, working no. for a giant megachurch, the premier megachurch. Oh, yeah. And we, we were not a megachurch back then. Yeah. I mean, we were by, by some standards, but, you know, Joel it's about 8, said, yeah, he said, you know, if we can just man maintain this, we'll, we'll just do great. If we can man but there's maintain. there's the exceeding abundance. Look oh, my gosh. That. Well, you know, we were feeling, like, why don't we start a, a uh, a Saturday night service. I think we started the, the no, we started, I'm sorry, we started the second service on a Sunday, mm -hmm. not the Saturday night. And so we, we started that service and immediately grew by five or 6,000 people. I mean, overnight. Just, just from that. Saturday night. And a year church. later That's we started. That's amazing. No, no, it was a second Sunday morning. And then oh, we started wow. the Saturday night. And then when we started the compact center, we went to three services in the morning. We still, and then we had a Spanish service in the afternoon. We had a young adult at night. So we were doing five services a wow. day. It was brutal. Well, <laughs> I there. was saved at Lakewood Church, yeah. my, my sons as well. And so uh, very, just I have Grateful. such a, a, a great fondness and love of that church. And yeah. so um, just respect very much everything yeah. that they do there. So, yeah. so um, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. To, to be a part of that, uh, and, and your and your wife Lisa, how was she involved? Well, she would she would come and serve. Uh, she was working at school at at the school as a librarian, and mm -hmm. with my, with my uh, she just wanted to be in with the boys. It's not she was not she was a it. great mama and wife she was and, incredible mm -hmm. mom. She was. I, I told them uh, I forget how old they were, but it, they were they were a little bit older, and and the little one was giving her a little grief and everything. I said I said you have no idea what you have. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I came, my whole family, we never knew divorce. My whole, mm -hmm. no aunts, uncles, anybody in my family had never been divorced. And the, kind of the same with my wife. So mm -hmm. the, the kids kind of tend to take that for granted when that's their yeah. environment. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a quick story about the airplane. What was so funny when you talk about kids and environment, we went on a trip with some friends that went snow skiing and we flew our plane up to Colorado to go snow skiing and we went up to the cabin we had to drive back down to pick them up they flew in commercially and my son he's about eight years old and he said well why didn't they just bring their plane Oh, so wow. his perception was he well, had you high know, because it, well, yeah. because Doesn't we had, everybody have a plane. Yeah, you know, some of my friends had planes, so he just you know everybody mm -hmm. has planes. You know, so you you got to be careful. <laughs> you know, the the paradigm of children, you know, the, what, the environment they grow up in. So they they had never experienced divorce, and so I just said, I said, do you realize that most kids don't have a mom? that took a job at school just to, to look out for you mm -hmm. and, and know you know you, she has your best interest at heart. Yes. And, and, uh, and you know, especially my, my little one is just, was so close to her. And, mm -hmm. uh, what a blessing. Just, yeah, so he was, he was in a, a freshman high school, just started school and he had such a pure heart. He, he came to her and asked her to homeschool him and she just scared her to death. And she said, mm -hmm. you know, she was just taken back. Mm -hmm. And she prayed for nine months over that. Wow. But as, as a sophomore, we started a sophomore year, through his senior year, 
uh, she, she, uh, she taught him, and then, you know, we were, we were touring with Joel at that time. So, so anyway, perfect we, timing. Oh, uh, New York, Nashville, San Diego. You know, we would always go a day earlier and take him to a museum or oh my you know, goodness. around New York. So he got to travel. And, Best education uh, oh ever. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah you know, he had, been, he had been around the country. Most kids, you know, they get to go to Dallas. You know, yeah, but he, he had exactly. Been, and he'd, he'd be so around. involved in the ministry oh, as well. So oh, that's such yeah. a blessing for and, him. Yeah. He, he finally got, I called him about. Uh, a year and a half ago, we were in Canada, and our drummer had gotten sick on the plane. The plane had to land in Denver to get him off. It was a medical emergency. Oh, wow. And because we were in Canada, you have to have a passport, obviously. I called. Mm -hmm. None of our other drummers had passports, and one of them w was out of town. And so I called Kyle, <laughs> and, who is a drummer. He actually plays for another church here in town. And I said, Kyle, what you doing this weekend? <laughs> This was a Friday. I said, can you come to Canada and play? So he finally got, it was his dream. And he was in, in high school when we did Madison Square Garden one of the first times. And wow. so I, I let him play the drums for sound check, which he just, you know, he, that was his dream. So getting to play in, in Canada before 10,000 people was just incredible. Oh, my incredible. goodness. What uh, a dress. I have, some, I have some photos. Hopefully, hopefully we can show those photos that I have of that. Oh, yeah. Play. yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, exciting. So, so anyway, it, it was a wonderful time. And... Uh, so to get on with the story, we uh, actually I had gone to a uh, I was speaking at a seminar in Singapore, and the only reason I accepted the invitation was from a company that we used their equipment. The only reason I accepted the invitation was because Joseph Prince's new building was just about finished, and we had we had worked with the Joseph Prince Ministry on on their facility, doing some recommendations. Had been in New York at one time with the architects for them, and so it was two weeks before it opened. You know, the timing was really good, so yeah. I, so I went and and uh, was speaking. Just just loved it, and uh, uh, at that time my wife started running fever, was sick. This was probably early. Was she early back at October. home? She was at home. Here? Yeah, yeah. she had stayed at home, and, and okay. Uh, uh, when I got home, uh, she was just running fever, and so we had. She had already been to the doctor once, and we ended up going to several doctors over the course of November. She ended up getting the flu in late November. And matter of fact, both of us were sick Thanksgiving Day. We spent the whole day in bed. I remember that, and. Uh, all the way, you know, we started going to specialists. We just couldn't find out when she had back pain and just a slow grade, you know, sometimes a hundred, but you know, more, mostly low grade fever. Uh, and had gone to gynecologist, and then we had gone to gastrointestinal and uh, you know, upper and lower GIs. Just all the tests. You're trying just everything to figure find, it out. Can't find a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll back up to the summer before that. So this is November. In the summer, and and this is. This, I had I had a dream. I had a reoccurring dream. It happened three times over two weeks, and I would come home from work and I would get out of the car and I'd walk up our sidewalk to the front door, which I never went in the front door anyway. But in this dream, I walk up and the door opens. It's Lisa's sister down in the valley. I talked about her, and she she was uh, you know crying and she said, "Well, Lisa's died," you know, and 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 it's just such a shock. I remember I would wake up from the tears on my pillow. Mm -hmm. So that happened three times. One, you know, you don't tell your wife, oh, I dreamed you died last night. I never, no. I never said that. So that, and that was the summer. And so we went on uh, uh, in, in December going through all the tests and uh, we see the doctor the week before Christmas and he says, why don't we just do a CT scan? We can't find anything, don't know what it is. And uh, the doctor, uh, find something. We, we go the day after and he calls that afternoon and says, we found a spot. Well, I'd been talking to uh, Joel's brother, Dr. Paul, who's a surgeon, mm -hmm. and we had been consulting for about three or four weeks on, on that. And he said, well, if it's a one centimeter, they would handle it different than a three centimeter. And he said, but just, you know, let's just see what it says. And right. so we're getting there talking and the, and the doctor says, uh, he tells us the size and it's just like tunnel vision for me. I was, I start saying, he said 12, and I'm thinking millimeter, did he say millimeter or 12 centimeter? And I'm saying, and he said 12 centimeters, and I'm, I'm sizing up how big 12 centimeters is. Oh, my it's the goodness. size of a grapefruit. What a and, nightmare. Oh, my life. You know, just And where, where was yeah. that in her, in her? It was in a liver. It was primary liver cancer, it turned out. Well, by the time we did the, the, uh, uh, the biopsy on it was January the 9th, and and uh, I, uh, we we had started a Facebook page, which I swore I'd never be on Facebook. 
we, we went back to the, the day that they had told us that, that she had cancer and, and a, had found the tumor. We went over to Dr. Paul's house immediately. And uh, he had, he had, you know, he said, well, the worst thing you do is get on the internet and read about this. Said, Let's wait till we get the biopsy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just tell you, there's probably 80% chance this is malignant. And uh, he said, uh, uh, you know, we ju we're just gonna believe with you. And it, it was as if God had just fallen on Lisa. And she said, well. She had a peace. A, a peace and, and knew that she was gonna be victorious over this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, uh, she stood up, you said, well, you know, she'd been working with Miss Doty in, 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 in prayer. She was a prayer partner. And, and she said, well, Miss Doty's gonna need somebody to take over this prayer ministry. And I'll have a great testimony. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, that was the faith she had. And she maintained that faith till, till the bitter end. She, uh, you know, we, we did some things she wanted to do. Uh, we did chemo, and, you know, no result. The, the team, tumor grew four centimeters during the six, six weeks or so we were doing, doing, uh, the, uh, doing chemo treatment. And so we decided to, to yeah, stop that at some point. Yeah, because it probably made her so sick. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, was, it was horrible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she just, she wanted to go to Florida. She wanted to be on the beach. She loved the beach. And so we went there in, in the first of May. We did, matter of fact, in, in mid-April, we did a, the last night of hope in Miami. She, she got to go on that. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you didn't know she was sick, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know other than the tumor was so big by then, she looked like she was pregnant. Uh, we went and to- And just kept her faith and kept yep. her smile and all, her joy. All the time, all the way through. You know, the journey for me, even after she died, was not light. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a dark time. I mm -hmm. just, you know, we had an incredible marriage and, people would tell us, you know, we, I, I didn't mention, we had talked, we had taught marriage classes and, and, and actually had just finished one in the summer before she got sick and they wanted us to do another one. And, and we said, let's get, let's get through, <laughs> through the summer. And then we talked about it and that's when she started feeling bad. But, but, uh, uh, you know, after that, I, I had, at some point I said, well, how can I ever replace this? Most people don't find this once. Mm -hmm. I don't have a big enough ego to think that I could find it twice. Yeah. And so, you know, I just decided I would pour myself into this great ministry that God's blessed me to be a part of. And, and I just remember just falling off a cliff, literally, in the next two weeks. It was just hit rock bottom. It was horrible. And the only thing that kept me, you know, I knew the truth. I knew that God could deliver. Mm -hmm. But I just, you were, at, at that point, when you're at your bottom, it, it's just like a fog is around. You can know the truth. But it just can't make it from your head to your heart. Mm -hmm. you, can't, right. you can't make that leap. And, uh, it, you know, it took a friend of mine talking to me, you know, and he said, well, how many single women are in Houston? And how many, how many have, you know, that are Christians that, that could identify with you and have, you know, nur nurturing to pick a, pick a, a, a an attribute that I, you know, would, would, would find desirable. Mm -hmm. and, and so anyway, he, he, this guy kind of helped me, dug me out of right. that. And, and, you know, kind of, at least from a head knowledge, saw that there was a possibility of, of hope for a relationship in the future. Right. Well, now and, take us back, step, let's step back just a, a second and take us to the last day or so like what tell us what happened with Lisa I mean did she, she just kept believing and then yeah she the Lord she, she did uh, it became obvious uh, within a week or so that she she had gone from looking relatively normal you may not have known uh, to, to, to she would age five five years a day and I'm not exaggerating five years a day she, she went from from looking you know, 50 years old to, to look in 80 in, in mm. three and a half weeks. And uh, her sister was there. And what happens with this type of cancer is it demands so many calories. Well, she, she wasn't eating five, 500 calories a day and the, and the tumor's consuming four to 5,000 calories. Oh my goodness. So once once it consumes your, your body fat, it starts feeding on muscle and then finally on tissue. And that's what started happening to her. She had, you know, her eyes were sunken back. She went blind one eye and then she lost vision out of the other, uh, but still singing his praises. Miss mm -hmm. Doty came over. Uh, Doty Osteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. she had seen her the week before and I told her, I said, You're, you, you probably wouldn't recognize her now. It's just been a week. And she said, well, what if I, what 
if I cry. And I said, well, she'll, she'll lift you up. <laughs> and, and she did. Oh, she was just, a, it was amazing, the strength. Wow. That comfort and grace oh, gosh, that only can just, come from yeah. God. You know? Yeah. And, and she had that to the very end. She, she, you know, the last day or two, she got to where she couldn't talk. My brother and his family came over uh, the night before. And she, uh, she was somewhat coherent and could talk. And my, my nephew had hugged her and she hugged the rest of the family and she told him to come back because she liked how he smelled. Oh, and, uh, how sweet. You know, and all along you guys are just praying and believing, and believing. that all, God is going to heal her yeah, in all, spite although, of what you're seeing. And in spite of this dream that had reoccurred. Right. The, day I, the day we found out she had the cancer, I had that dream again. It, was, it had been six months. Mm -hmm. Do you think I, I was preparing you with that dream? I don't know why else. Because well, I've never know, had anything like that in my life. It says that the Holy Spirit yeah. will, will warn, warn you yeah. for, mm -hmm. to prepare you. You know. And the only thing, I, I never told Lisa about the dream, but I did say, I said, I don't think this is going to be an easy journey when mm -hmm. it first started. Mm -hmm. I, I think for God to use this testimony, he's going to have to be glorified. It's going to have to be unquestionable. God, mm -hmm. not medical, not, right. it's going to be miraculous mm -hmm. with this healing. And it, and, exactly. it, and it is and was. It just, it wasn't on this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. She is completely healed and healthy on yeah. the other side. That's yeah. what yes. we have to... You know, it's so hard for us who have people we're left behind yeah. to know, but they're happy and at peace yeah. with Jesus. And, and wouldn't want to come back. Would never want right. to come back. Yeah. And so, and, and and we do. We we're going to uh, continue having read on on our next program. Uh, what we like right now, Reed, is we're we're going to talk about what God did after this, and you're not going to want to miss it because. There's so much hope in what his message is. And would you mind praying for our audience no, right now? No, I would love to. Dearly Father, we thank you for, for this program that you're using to reach out to people across Texas and Louisiana. God, we just, we just ask that you would yes. reach out to, to them sitting there just, just to know someone who's lost somebody, lost a friend or a family member. God, there, there's hope and there is life after the loss. And, and again, God, you're, you're the great healer. We're going to believe for healing till, till the last day. But there are times, God, when, when it's ordained that, that things don't go the way we want it, God. And we give you praise for that, too. And we ask that, that, that you comfort those that are in that situation where life hasn't, hasn't been fair or been, been what we desired. God, we just ask that you would, you would mend their heart, heal their hearts, and give them hope. Because without hope, God, you, you, you can't have faith without it. And we just ask that, that, that you would give them that sustaining faith for hope in life after, after loss. In Jesus' name.